Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I'm so excited about this word today. I'm excited about who's here. Thank you, Lord. Because, you know, it's just God just has this. In God's time, and he makes all things make sense. Amen. Oh, in his time. But it's not, it's not our time. It's his time. Everybody with me here? Amen. You know what? Let me go ahead and pray before this thing just takes off like a rocket. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for your wonderful people, Lord, that's here, Lord. Even those, Lord, that are watching via Facebook, Lord, I thank you for them. In Jesus' name, Lord, may your word fall on hearts that are ready to receive and ears ready to hear. In Jesus' name, Lord, we know your word won't return back to you void, but it will accomplish what it says it will do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to, you know, I was I was worshiping, um, and they were singing so beautifully, and I just wanted to say, can we change the song to Lord Stop the Rain? <laughs> It's been raining all morning, Lord, would you? <laughs> That's just a joke. Oh, Lord, you just got the rain. It's been raining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when I was in, in the midst of worship, I was pondering the path of, of ministry and the, the road that he has led us on. And, and it's been so good. And, and, and God brings ministry through each individual vessel according to his will for the vessel. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how he does it. You know, and, and I and, and our lives are are experienced roadmaps, if you will, that you can just kind of tick mark the things that are inside of you. See if if, if an apple tree drops and an apple and, and, and an orange happens to be on the ground under the apple tree, then we know that that orange was placed there by someone else. Amen. Right? Because the apple drops, the apple, apple tree drops apples. Amen. Right? And so I was, I was thinking, I was like, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all the wonderful people that you bring in, 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 the, in, the, in the midst of life to life ministries. And then he starts showing me some things. I just love when God Amen. starts revealing some things. And, and I saw my life, mm. you know, life to life. I saw my life before life to life. And, and I was a, a football player is, when, is where I, this vision takes off. And, and, and I was on this great team. And, 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 and I wasn't the best player on the defense. There were a lot of great guys on the deep. I wasn't the strongest. Right with me here. I wasn't the fastest. I mean, this, this team was so good that out of the 11 starters, nine guys got scholarships. Wow. <laughs> nine guys. We had one that was so good that walked out, out of the team um, into the professional leagues of an entirely different sport. From high school football to professional baseball. Wow. So when I tell you I wasn't the greatest, you know, my max was like 316 pounds on the hand cling minister. And in, in, in high school, he's like, man, that's strong. We had a guy right beside me on the defensive line that could do it six times in a row. So when I'm telling you this team was gifted, gifted, gifted. But I wasn't the draw. When you came to watch this team play, it, you know, I was a good player, but I wasn't the draw. I did get a scholarship, but I wasn't the draw. You see, when, when you go in the, in the 80s, when you, when you watch the Chicago Bulls play, you didn't come to watch Phil Jackson, right? You came to see Michael Jordan, right? See, I, I was never the draw. I got a, I got a, I got a chance to experience things on the highest levels of the sport. So I got a Division One scholarship. There's, there's no higher scholarship. I finished it. 
You know, I got to go to the NFL. There's no league out on the other side of the NFL. It's the NFL. Everybody with me here? I got, I got to go to these places. I was never the draw. And so God, in the midst of all of this, he puts inside of me who I am. I'm not the draw. I'm the coach. Oh boy, you see where we're going. You see where we're going already. He brings, you see, he, he moved me out of all that and he brings me these wonderful players. Now, I coached a guy in high school. He's playing for Carolina. He played yesterday. On the line that I coach. Not like, you know, but no, no, I coached. I coached a guy that plays for Appalachian State. These are full ride scholarships. He played yesterday. Are you, are you with me here? So I coached. When I had, when I started personal training to coach, I did personal training here in this town. And I had 16 clients like that. Personal training. Personal minister. Personal training. You see, I've, I've never been the draw. I've been the person that puts something into the stars. So God gives me this ministry called Life to Life. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some people that need to go from life to life. And I want you to coach them. And I want you to make them stars. That's what I'm good at. My wife asked me, we were eating pizza. It's 11 guys on the defense, minister. For those of you who don't know football, just sit still. Let's get to the word in a minute. 11 guys. She said, honey, tell me how you motivated them. Yesterday, I was, we was eating some pizza. She said, tell me what you said to them. I said, well, I'd get down on my knee like this. Because they was on their knee. And I look them in the face. This is the front line. The people that make first contact. See, God will have this thing fit. I'm going to have you coach the people that make first contact. And these are the ones that get hit every single play. Amen. Every single play. They get hit every day. Every day, minister. So the devil messing every day. They get hit, Kevin. When the ball moves, they have to make contact. I look him in the face. And I said, I don't care what the rest of the team is going to do. I don't care. But you four individuals that's starting, we going to win. Because we going to win. We going to win. We going to make so many tackles up front. That the linebackers are going to ask us and say, would you please let somebody do so I can make a tackle too? <laughs> and I said, we're going to take it and we're going to make every single play our responsibility. I know everybody else got some responsibilities. So, 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 so the D-line, let me make it, make it, make it sense. So, so, so if I'm in church and I'm a worshiper, did, did, did my worship draw the crowd today? You, are you with me here? Did my service at the door, was I anointed enough to pull on me in? Did my prayer, see, see, I, I told them, I said, we going to win because we going to win. I said, you give me four guys that's committed and we going to win the game. Wait a minute, coach, there's 22 guys on the field at one time. Just give me four. Four. And we going to win. Amen. And I want you to take it and make every single play your responsibility. If they throw a touchdown long and the DB's out of place, the defensive back, well, they got the ball off because we didn't get that fast enough. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Every play our responsibility. And this is what God wants me to do. This is my ministry. It's to coach his great ones. To tell you that life, even when you thought life had its way with you, you was just at practice. <laughs> you was you was conditioning. You was conditioning. Getting in shape for the journey. Yeah. 
It got tough. It was hot. And some days you felt like quitting. And maybe you did. And the coach showed up and said, come on back. We need you. This is what this ministry is. This ministry is a place where you come to get something put inside of you so you can be great for God. So he's given me these great players who has great lives. And he's given me this wonderful message. And he said, I want you to tell the people how to navigate through the mess that's out there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You know, because there's a mess out there. Yes. I know when I, you know, I preach this message, I may get some flack. Sorry. You know, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. You, you know, when I played, I got some flack. There was some trash talkers on the other side. Oh, yeah. Everybody with me here. Amen. There's some people that watch from the stadium and say, Coach, why come you ain't doing this? But they weren't on the field. They didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And God said, I'm going to make this so crystal clear that I'm going to give you these players and these players are going to have a universal thing in common. Mm-hmm. Is they're going to be they're going to be great. But, uh, but the foundation and all of them is going to be rock solid. It's going to be identical in each one of them. What is it? They're married. They're in covenant. There's a foundational covenant that exists. They're married. Just, this, is, this is why I'm, I'm going to start it off. Because the one thing that they're going to have in common is they're going to know how to endure a marriage. They're going to know how to endure a covenant. Because this is what I have to do to my people. I have to endure. These are the players that's here. Hallelujah. That's the foundation. Your covenant. And we're going to hear all these winds that's blowing in the air. Your covenant is the foundation. Hallelujah. It's your covenant. It's your covenant. It's your covenant. It's that thing you fought for because he wants you to know that if you fought for this and it's still standing, you for sure can stand for me. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, Lord, there's all these winds blowing. He gives me these stories of some of these great men that have, you know, I saw one great minister that ministers to thousands every Sunday. And I read his biography and, and he had 40 people for 10 years in a storefront. <laughs> for 10 years. Then he showed me Noah when he was building the ark. And he was building the ark just a few. Thank you, Lord. For just a few. To establish a new covenant. Or reestablish a covenant. The world that got so wicked is that got just a few. You know? Some some married folks. You know, like like the marriage I created. Mm. I'm going to get them in the boat and I'm going to have you to pour into them and I'm going to have you to teach them how to launch ministries and I'm going to have you to put them on these plateaus and they're going to preach and they're going to teach and they're going to soar you're going to coach them. That's what's here. And these winds are blowing. Winds are blowing. Winds are blowing. And God says maintain the course. Maintain the course. Maintain the course. And he calls forth. 
his fathers. And we have fathers in here. Thank you. We call them forth. He says, move into position. Move into position. You see, when you when you when you don't when the heavenly when when you don't have one, come on. My God, come on. Hallelujah. When you don't have something you can relate to, then Eve can convince you to eat the fruit. And God shows up and he says. Because thou hearken to the voice of thy wife. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. You know what I told you to do. Did you not just say? Mm -hmm. You know what I told you to do. You know what I told you to do. And you didn't do it. Because thou hearken to the voice of thy wife. You know what I told you to do. Yeah. See, somebody may accuse me of you know, trying to put wives in place. This ain't a message about putting wives in place. This is a message about identifying the spirit that's in the atmosphere. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Remember me here. Because when you're in covenant, the wife represents the Holy Spirit inside of the body. That still small voice. Y'all didn't hear me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The world took the terminology and twisted it and presented it on a plate. And it says, submission. 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 That's what God ever his intent. His intent is come here, wife. Is for her to have a mission inside of the mission. It's a submission. It's a mission up under my mission. Did you just hear what I said? It's a mission up under my mission. Did you hear what I just said? It's a mission inside of the mission. Now, if I get off track, don't you abandon your mission. Did you hear what I just said? Thank you. Don't abandon your mission. Everybody let me hear. But this was the intent. A mission inside of the mission. Hallelujah. Who we'll have a seat, honey. Hallelujah. So we have this order of things and God says, I need for you to teach my people something that the enemy is using. I need you to teach them how to try the spirit by the spirit. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody with me here. You need to know what spirits are in the atmosphere. Amen. Are you with me? And the scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Did you just hear what I said? Do not believe every spirit. But test spirits. To see whether they are from God. Right? It says, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. If I'm a false prophet, then that means there's a word inside of me to have a degree of accuracy. That's mm. right. For all the false prophets out there, if you think I'm talking about you, I am. If, if, 
the wind goes past your ears and you think I'm talking about you, I am. Because we got to get this thing lined up. Everybody with me? We got it. Because this is my team. This is who is going to go and do those things that God has called them to do. And I got to have their ears in tune to the Spirit of God. So he says, uh, for many pro false prophets have gone out into the world. He says, by this, you know the spirit of God. Did you just hear what I said? Yes. By this, you know, it's capitalized, the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ comes in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So has, is he in the world? He was in the world back then. So there has to be some kind of identifiers because right now there's people I see on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, and everybody's saying Jesus is Lord. So there's got to be something else. So I searched. All by myself. I said, Lord, this has got to go through the filter of your spirit. I want to know. I want to know so I can teach your people how to know. Everybody with me? Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 4. You need to know so you can teach your people how to know. Because there is an enemy that will come and attack a body of believers. Amen. And if you don't know, and if you can't recognize, you're going to have some problems. Are you with me? Amen. There was a, a man named Simon that was a false prophet who had a whole city on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the scriptures. Until he started seeing the miracles. Yeah. And, what, and how he was exposed. How he was exposed is because he went to the tool that he used. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <Come on. coughs> Y'all don't hear me. How he was exposed is he went to the tool that he used. Mm. This is for you. This is not for me. This is for your ministries. And they're in here. The tool was can I buy it? Mm. Did you just hear what I said? Yes. Can I buy it? Oh God. How you do that? How much money can I buy it? The only way he was exposed. Can I buy it? Mm. Did you hear what I just said? Oh We're not done. Because we're going to take this little town and we're going to wipe the windows of our car. <laughs> Get a little foggy. He's taking our buy it. But in Luke chapter 4, and let's watch what Jesus did. Everybody say Jesus is the chief prophet. You do, you do, you do agree with that, right? Absolutely. He says in Luke 4, Verse 17. First he says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So he grabbed some what? Word. Christ grabbed a book. Did you hear what I just said? We're going to have to get this thing lined up. I know, I know it's going to be tough out there. I know it's tough in all this. But it's a lot of stuff in the atmosphere. From a lot of different people 
saying a lot of similar things. And he makes you, if you don't, if you don't get this thing in your mind right, then you can get blown away from a lot of people saying a lot of things. Jesus used an example. He said, go grab that book right there. You know why he said, go grab that book? Because from my inspiration is how it was written. Did you just hear what I just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the beginning was the word. Go grab those word. words yeah. right there. Go grab them. Go grab them. Do not disconnect yourself from the word. Christ said, Go grab that book. God, let me make it make sense. God. In the flesh said, go grab that book. Did you hear me? Amen. And let's open the book and see what's in it. My wife didn't know what the message is. I wouldn't tell her what it is. So she watched me now. I go, oh my God, I got to watch this guy. I didn't even tell her. Ah, but that's my prophet. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look beside you, man. Look beside you. Look at that woman beside you. That's your prophet right there. Oh yeah, that's that's connected to you in covenant. The Bible says the two shall become one flesh. One flesh, that's your prophet right there. Right beside you. But you want her right. She wants you right. Jesus says, go grab my prophet. That book. God says, go grab my prophet. That book right there. Do you hear me? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when you got people in front of you that said, put that book down, you scratch them off the list. Yes. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. When you go to meetings, put that book down, you scratch them off the list. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? We have God right here. And God says, go grab that book right there. You don't want to know what he says, Max. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is already on him. Do you hear me? The Holy Spirit is already on him. And he says, go grab that book. And with God having a spirit, the Holy Spirit already on him, he decides to read something that he can quote. <laughs> Mm. Don't you put that book down. Ever. When I played football, you know the number one thing I needed? The playbook. Did you hear me? I had great coaches, but I needed a playbook. All right. So we're clearing the air. Clearing the air. We're making things plain. God said, go grab the book. Right? And then let's see what he reads out of the book. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. All right? All right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. We got people watching. And if they can get past this curse word that the enemy has made into a curse word, we can all be on the same page. What's that word? Learning. learning. We can learn. Because I had to get to a place where stiff rebukes was put out. Did not tell you to stay the course and walk righteous before you started anything. What was the word I gave you? Pastor, yes, Lord. Stay the course and walk righteous. Stay the course. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, this is how we try the spirits. Are you with me? By the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Christ sitting there reading. We're standing up reading. 
And he says, number one, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. My wife will tell you, this, this man has been in some places where the, the carpet was so, we couldn't clean the carpet again. Man, they say it had to be replaced. You know those places. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know why you know those places? Because the Spirit of God is on you too, and you got a part in this. You know those places, sis. He says, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, you can take some of this in. So, so just to let you know, Jesus really did do it. In Matthew 5, 3, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. <laughs> For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We do agree that Jesus is anointed, right? Yeah. He's anointed because the spirit of the Lord is upon him. So what does he do? This is the chief prophet. The chief apostle, the chief evangelist, the chief pastor, the chief teacher. He preaches the gospel to the poor. And not just poor financially, but poor in spirit. Are you with me? Yeah. This is how you try the spirit. It preaches to those that are poor in spirit. Because this is why the body, I want us to get this today so we walk out of here. You ain't going to trick me up no more, devil. Are you with me? Amen. The body of Christ was anointed by a spirit. The spirit. The spirit of the Lord. The one that was there that bared witness in heaven anointed him to preach a gospel to the poor. Okay? So you got that on the list. When I'm checking it out and watching this individual, I mean, did they preach the gospel to the poor? Hmm? Then, then he had sent me. So now, now I'm preaching, right? I'm preaching, right? Everybody with me here? Amen. Prophet in training, you with me here? <laughs> I'm anointed, and now you know what he does. He had sent me. This means I go to action to heal the brokenhearted. Will this spirit go? Will it move? Will it go and heal the brokenhearted? Sent, go. Sit, go. I'm preaching to the poor. Now I'm going. And it says in Philippians. Let's look at Psalm. Just write these down. Psalm 34, 18 and 19. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such of a contrite spirit. Verse 19. And it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Wait a minute. I thought... I thought everything was supposed to be peaches and cream. I thought when I got saved, baptized, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, that everything was supposed to, you know, take my iron and, you know, you can plug the iron in, you just iron the wrinkles out. You know, that's how it's supposed to be, right? Until you get one of those linen garments. <laughs> and you have to spray some water on it. Put some starch on, cause that 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 thing won't lay down. See, you ain't never dealt with a wrinkle that won't lay down. <laughs> yeah, that wrinkle won't lay down. You gotta put something on it. You gotta be sick. You gotta go get something. Let me go get the water. And put some more heat to it. Oh, that ain't do it either. Let me get some starch. I need something, some heavy duty starch to hold it in place. And Rinko said, you can hold me in place, but you're going to see my mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's prophetic. Come on. Wow. Mm. You're going to see my mark. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, 
Hallelujah. I got to come out of this jacket, baby. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Shirt out, she wants me to get in coaching mode. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm in coaching mode now. I've got my coaching slacks on and speaking in the pole. I'm in coaching mode. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Somebody said, That's me. <laughs> but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Out of some of them. Out of all. The Bible says after you have suffered a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. then he established you. I mean, you got to go through something. After you suffer a while, yeah. many are the afflictions. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, you know the scripture, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And in verse 7, and the peace of God. This is what you want to happen. The peace of God, which passes all your understanding, shall keep your hearts. Now, this is how, this is how Christ does it. He sins. He, you get sent to the brokenhearted. And you know what you bring in? You bring in the peace of God. The peace of God. Hallelujah. This is what you bring in, brother. The peace of God. I got my arms around this peace. And they're broken hearted. But the peace of God is what I'm bringing. This is peace. And let's see what happens when I bring his peace. I'm not. This means when I leave. Uh, I'm, that house that I leave from. There is a peace. Not a worry. Y'all didn't hear me. Is that, is that the right one? Is that the right? Is that, is that the word? Was, was not the word? Is that, is that, uh, peace. I'm bringing peace. It brings peace. Peace. Watch this. The peace which passes all understanding. My situation don't look like it changed, but I feel pretty good. I know what I'm facing tomorrow. And I was worried about it before you came. But now I can face tomorrow. Amen. I can face it. And this is just, just to make it very clear. So it ain't some new crazy doctrine. God says because you know it be some people coming. And he's saying that it's, it's, it's some other spirit. But the, the text says. Shall keep your hearts and mind. Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Not Buddha. Uh -huh. Not Muhammad. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Right with me here. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Oh, but Christ is gone through Christ Jesus. We're living in a new dispensation through Christ Jesus. This is a letter written after Christ is gone. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. We got to keep this thing right. Hallelujah. We got to keep it right. Mm -hmm. We got to keep it right. Mm -hmm. So now I can heal the brokenhearted, and I'm bringing my peace. Mm -hmm. This is this is what this is this is how I identify. Yeah. You know, you know, who are the brokenhearted people you didn't heal? <clears throat> Do you even have a desire to? Mm -hmm. What are the poor places you done been into? Mm. Three. Now this is this is God. And he's saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. To preach deliverance to the captives. He's to preach deliverance. To preach deliverance. I watched the minister get up last week and testify. And his heart was hurting because our family needs deliverance. Mm -hmm. To preach deliverance. Mm -hmm. 
to preach deliverance. You bring people and you talk to them and you talk to them and you talk to them about deliverance. How do I deliver them by the peace? Through Christ Jesus. Preaching the gospel. Well, you in there. Deliverance to the captives. Jesus in John 8, 34 and 36. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. The servant. The servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. Hmm. But the son abideth forever. So the servant was in the house. But the sin gets him put out of the house. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son, capital S, abideth forever. Abideth ever. 36. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free. How? You know what indeed means? Absolutely. It does, absolutely. But I want the verb form of indeed. If I'm free indeed, then this means my actions. I've been set free. The deeds that I do. Ooh, ooh, you feel me? My actions. Jesus set me free so I don't have to battle the same deeds. I don't have to keep going through the same thing. I'm free indeed. I can move around. I don't do that no more. Everybody with me here? Free. That's who do it. You know who did it? The son. Jesus. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Let's keep going. Number four. Let me catch us up here. He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal the broken heart. Right? Now I'm preaching deliverance to the captives. That means those are captive in sin. I can tell you don't have to do that. Jesus has set you free. Right? And now, the recovering of sight to the blind. Now this right here just puzzled me. When he gave me this text, I said, Lord, how did I miss this? And when I give it to you, you're going to be scratching your head too. Minister, you're going to be scratching your head on this. <laughs> the recovering of sight of the blind, he gave, let me slow down. You know, I get talking real fast sometimes. The recovering of sight to the blind. <laughs> In Matthew 9, 27 through 29. Listen to this story. It says, and when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him. <laughs> now that's in the text. Yes. Two blind men followed him. <laughs> he says he's in the recovery of the sight of the blind. Wait a minute, Lord. Two. You're just cracking jokes in your word. I know the joy of the Lord is my strength, but I got to laugh in that day. I was crying and said, The Son of David have mercy, mercy on us. And watch this in verse 28. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. They was blind. And then when he went into the house, they came unto him. That's what the scripture says. God gave us this text so that it fits the totality of any circumstance of blindness that may be in your life. The first thing they did was they followed him. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. 
They followed him. That means they had to walk a walk that he was walking on a path that he had cut to get to a house that he was in. Everybody here? Yeah. And then he came unto them. It says the blind man came unto him and Jesus said to him, said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, yea, Lord. Do you believe? In whatever situation of blindness that you may have, do do you believe? Amen. Then touched, and I highlighted the word touched. Touched. You ever been touched by the Lord? We had prayer here Thursday night, and the Lord was going around touching. <laughs> There was a touch. There was a touch. You know that feeling? You know when he touches you. Touch he their eyes. Saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. You followed me here, didn't you? You walked to a place that I was at, didn't you? Am I real? Did you didn't you feel my touch? Didn't you feel my touch? According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. He healed him. Number five. Hallelujah, this is good. Quick review. He anointed me to preach. I preach. I'm just I'm trying the spirits. It preaches. It goes out to the brokenhearted. It preaches deliverance. And those that are lost gives them direction. After they follow him. After they follow him. After they follow him. Let me tell you what it didn't say. And when Jesus departed hence, Jesus saw two blind men and Jesus came to them. Jesus is not Santa Claus. Right. <laughs> Jesus is so powerful. This spirit on him is so powerful that the blind can smell it out like a hound dog. Mm. It can smell it like a hound dog. Oh, God. They came to Jesus. They came. They came to this spirit on Jesus. The spirit didn't come to them. I'm, I'm just reading the text. It says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what God said in his flesh. He said, this, you know, this spirit came on me and this is what it anointed me to do. If you've been praying about something, Praying, 
Prayer is your reach out for an answer. Prayer is your follow. Everybody with me here. I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't want the the the, the, the gifts to fall the cliff. Prayer is your follow. Everybody with me? I'm reaching out. So whatever spirit comes to me, it needs to bear witness to that which I've been reaching out for. Amen. I was blind. You, I'm reaching in prayer. I'm following in prayer. And while I'm in my prayer place, the spirit, it touches me. So now all of a sudden, Prophet Angela is in her prayer place and, and she gets up and, and she gives you a call and uh, comes to you and says, you know, there's something you've been praying for. I'm giving you some identifiers. You heard what I just said? Amen. You don't have to scratch your head. And, uh, you didn't hear me. The Lord told me you was going to be the president of China. I'm here to tell you about it. And you're like, I'm in. <laughs> no, no, no. My reach in prayer causes the spirit, causes me to meet the spirit. It moves upon his vessels. Are you with me? My reach. A prophecy should never blindside you. Keep on going. You might have to say that again. A prophecy. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Should never blindside you. You got you and your wife, and y'all are planning, and y'all been praying together. You know why y'all one flesh? Praying together. And so you're talking about, man, how can I, how can we, uh, this, this, you know, work in life to life ministries until our ministry is launched? I'm gonna make it personal because I like it this way. They don't teach us how to do it. And some somebody comes along and said, you know, God has called you to Africa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I did my hand with that intention. Yeah. Y'all saw that either. <laughs> <laughs> I see your ministry. It's 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 a fire in, in Antarctica. You got some big loose in, our, in Antarctica that you build. And all of the people in Antarctica, the millions in Antarctica are going to come to your igloos. And the flame and the fire of God is going to be there. The Lord says, I'm I'm tell you something. The Lord get tired of stuff. Ah, yeah. We thank the God. God says, I'm tired of this Fine. mess. Yeah. And they pinning on me like it's me. Yeah. The Lord took me in a vision and he showed me a spirit. And there was a spirit on the beach. And and it was two. And one was standing on the land. And one was standing on the water. And there was one that was right beside it. The difference is it couldn't stand on the land and the water at the same time. So the Lord asked me to look. And I looked. And he said, can you tell the difference? I said, no. No, Lord. They look identical. Kevin, they were identical. He said, look again. And what I noticed is one kept moving. It 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 can't sit still. It keeps moving. It can't. Oh boy, let me keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other could stand on the water and the land at the same time. That's the 
only way I can tell the difference. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. The blind now can see. He said, go tell John. The blind can see. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You know, those pains you've been in in your life. To bring you out of those painful places. Freedom. Freedom to those that are bruised. Bruised. Look at Isaiah 49. Verse 8. We got one more after this. One more thing. Because I'm going to do what Jesus did once he got done too. <laughs> to set at liberty them that are bruised. And it's Isaiah 49 verse 8. It says, thus says the Lord. In an acceptable time have I heard thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee. And give thee for a covenant of the people. To establish the earth. You say, wait a minute. How did these marriages make it? <laughs> I got a man in here that used to do weight training as much as me. If you can ever get on the other side of your pain. <laughs> Isn't that right, Madison? You get to lifting and that pain comes ah, and it wreaks your body for weeks. Then you find that place where you can get stronger and it's not much pain. If you can get on the other side of your pain, then you're going to see the results that God really had intended for you. But if you quit in the pain, go to the weight room and body starts hurting. Okay, we're going today. I ain't going today. What's wrong? I'm hurting. <laughs> Take some ibuprofen and let's go. <laughs> if we can get on the other side to a, if you can get on the other side to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages to cause them to inherit what you have been through in your lives are, is meant for you to be able to tell others Amen. how to out of that place of desolation get to the inheritance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Let me read that part again. Thus says the Lord, an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 9. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness. Show, them, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and the pasture shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat or the sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. I think David knew about those springs. Yeah. He said, he leadeth me before the still waters. Are you with me here? The one that saved him leads him beside the still waters. 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 Mercy leads him beside the still waters. And I will make all my mountains away and my highways shall be exalted. Hmm. Have mercy on them and shall lead them. Forgive them and lead them. Show the mercy that I showed you. You know, how often do we not forgive? Not us, of course, you know, because you're the special people. <laughs> How often do we not forgive and 
you know, pull up somebody's laundry list over here and say, when well, I ain't hanging out with them because they, uh, 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 uh. have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Hallelujah. That's some power on the other side of pain. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. That's some power. That's some power that you will not get unless you go through the pain. God calls all things to work together. Do you remember when the people of Israel was in bondage? Moses showed up, went to Pharaoh the first time, and his mouth <laughs> calls Pharaoh to take away, stop gathering the straw for him. And they had to make bricks without straw. Remember that? Remember that? They was out there making that bricks without, they get them legs to going. But do you know why? They, they, the minister said, no, I don't know why. He was strengthening them for that walk. They had to walk into the wilderness. God said, your legs ain't strong enough for the journey. So I got to do something. Take you through a little pain. So I can strengthen your legs. So you can walk this thing out. Amen. You can walk it out. Some things are taken away to strengthen you. To be able to walk it out. After you have suffered a while. After you have failed countless times at benching 225 five times. Go back to the drawing board. Look at it. Do a little less weight. Do a little more. Eat right. Show up at the gym a little more. Then all of a sudden one day. Wow. Minister says, I can't go to them gyms like them quiet zone gyms. I need a real gym. <laughs> Pretty boy gyms. <laughs> and then they get the way you can see the results of your efforts. And that weight goes up. He says, ah! And everybody waiting looks like, what's wrong with him? I don't know. Ah! And they go up. Like, oh, oh. They don't know what you put into this. I beat you like that white talking back when you finally got me. <laughs> That's how you have to do. That's how you have to do. This is how you make it work. You think a deliverance ministry is free? You think you just can show up and I gave my life to Christ. I've been serving Christ faithfully for two years. You been through anything? No. What should I say? I want to be a deliverance ministry. I want to go to all the worst places and, and tell people about Jesus. Lay hands on the miracles happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me take you on the road that they went through. Oh, yeah. Experience some things. Yeah. Let, me, let me let you feel what they really going through. Let's see if you can get that jacket off. Let me put that life straight jacket on you and see if you get that jacket off. Got you strapped up, tied up into some bondage. Can you get it off, minister? I can't get it off. What you gonna do? Jesus, I'll walk behind you. Let me unloose the straps. And you can take it off. Now you know what they went through. Now you know. Now you know. Oh, boy. Now you know. Oh, yeah. I said, I want a family ministry. I want to do it from the rooter to the tutor. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, now the last one here. Hmm. 19 it says to preach the acceptable of the Lord. I want, you know, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, This is what the Spirit is upon him. 
It's been the Lord's body. And I got to kill some things because it's going to be two revivals. And, and they've already started. Was there anywhere that, in that list that Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for me to give you the money back? No. no. That's all right. That's all right. Was there anywhere in that list, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for you to get the flaming chariot with chrome rims? Is there anywhere in that list the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for you to get your 50 bedroom mansion in Iraq? Tell them the truth. Come on. Is there anywhere in that list? So when he tells you to try the Spirit by the Spirit, this means when somebody comes to you and prophesies, don't you eat that first. You take that prophecy home and you look at it. And you grab this piece of microscope, this, this piece of, what do you call that thing, with, with the one lens on the detectives use it, what is going to that thing go? Not the microscope, the other one. The magnifying glass, there you go. We don't use them now, that's, we just spread the pitch out with our fingers. <laughs> we couldn't spread the pitch out back in the days. You had to get a magnifying glass to spread the pitch out. You say two fingers, you spread it out. <laughs> Magnify. You take that prophecy home and you get this text that I just gave you and you you take this text and if this podium is that prophecy you look at that prophecy through this text just like this. This is how you try the spirit by the spirit. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and I'm looking at it right through this text. Right there. Right there. Right there. Then you say, okay that's the Lord. Do you not just see it? Amen. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Do you not just see it? That's how you do it. You take this spirit that was upon Jesus, this spirit, and you put it up under the magnifying glass. And you walk around it. And you look at it. And if something is not on this list, it doesn't ding right. If you got to question anything, well, maybe it, no, throw it out. Right. Anything. Well, right. I know this part, right? Throw it out. Anything. Anything. You throw it out. You got it. It lines up or it don't. Hallelujah. If you have to question anything, you throw it out. You throw it out. The whole thing. All of it. The first thing it has to line up with, what did God grab first? The word. <laughs> you grab the word. It has to line up with the word. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. The first thing you do, somebody gives you a prophecy, you grab the word. You grab that word. Are you with me? Amen. Because if part of it is right, Come on. deception mm -hmm. is truth. It's a truth cocktail yeah. <laughs> with a few drops of lie in it. There you go. It's a whole lot of truth mm -hmm. with a few drops of lie. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Amen. You take this word and you walk around that prophecy. And if it doesn't line up with the word, you throw it out. Every, bit of it. Every last bit of it. Let me tell you what God did. <clears throat> Y'all ready? Amen. Yeah. I know everybody here say you say you sanctified through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Everybody in here still say you've been saved all week? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> so I'm about to do what Jesus did. Okay. What God did. <laughs> Look at verse 20. It says, and he did what? Closed the book. He closed the book. <laughs> he did what? Closed the book. <laughs> 
He then he gave it to his minister. Why did he have to do that? He gave it to his minister. He closed what? God closed what? God closed what? God closed what? A book. He then he gave it to his minister. And then you know what he did? He sat down. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Oh, wow. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was so good. I have never seen that. You know how many times we've read that? And then the Lord to just show us how to try and test the Spirit by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Wasn't expecting a mic toss. But amen. Let's just stand to our feet right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If, if, if right now, oh my, being that we've gone to this revelation, hallelujah, we just, if you just need prayer right now, we just ask that you just, you can come right on up here and we'll just be uh, in agreement. We'll salt and seek the Lord um, for that which you need prayer for. Amen. We thank you, Lord.